a traditional home in Uganda, a fireplace gathering is a sacrosanct norm. A family encircles it, elders on one side, the children on the other, as they intently listen to the elder's voice. Tales from Stone Age, transformation of monarchies, behavior and environment are narrated. Told with the intention to persuade or dissuade, told and retold by generation. Environment was a seldom sounded object. There wasn't great need to. The natives always protected earth and its belongings. Physical features and environment were never under fear of extinction. Society was jealously preserved by superstition and spiritualism. Growing up around Lake Wamala, for me recalls vivid tales of the fireplace, the longest water body and most profound physical treasure in our land. Such importance made for a logical tale about this lake, lines neatly woven to safeguard its prestige, safely told to avoid abuse. Their lives and last breath depended solely on it, lifeless without it. Lake Wamala is located in districts of Mwende, Mitiana and Mpiji in central Uganda. The lake naturally covered an area of approximately 250 square kilometers, now short on those square kilometers due to man's activities. The name Wamala was coined from the last king of the Bachwezi dynasty, King Wamala. According to the legend, he disappeared into the lake. To a born of this land, the lake means more than a source of water, but stores a royal treasure in its banks, the legendary king Wamala. With the transformations taking shape in society, the fireplace stories are disappearing and so have the lake's natural fabric, from the amount of rain, to the temperatures, to the aquatic life it bears. Fishing as our main source of income, dropping in numbers, the financial spine of our village has cracked. As one of a few from the area who have acquired education, I made a lance to National Fisheries Resources Research Institute who confirmed the scare of the piercing climate change. According to the institute, temperatures around this lake varied before but have increased consistently by 0.2 to 0.3 degrees centigrade annually since the 1970s in line with global predictions. Rainfall in this region deviated from annual averages in the past according to periodic patterns but has generally been average since the 1980s. The changes in temperatures were responsible for the quickly fluctuating fish numbers. How climate change contributes to a reduction in water circulation, mixing of nutrients and oxygen that affects production of plant and animal materials upon which fish feed. As a result, tilapia, the naturally dominant species, was dissolving and their place taken by African catfish, the lungfish and a few types of haplochromines which are adaptive and tolerant to low oxygen conditions and can easily adapt to feeding on available plant and animal material. The fisheries body has a satellite pictures taken by the United Nations Environmental Programme which show that the lake shrank to half its size between 1984 and 1995 and increased between 1999 and 2008 never to regain its original size. Water levels reduced by 80 square kilometers. There is vivid evidence to this. The gauges around the lake used to be in water, but now appear on land due to reduced water levels as a result of a prolonged drought. With the benefit of a lens viewing deeper, there is more than what the eye can see. A few years ago, the lake used to stop here. But now it has reached the extent of increasing, decreasing up to that way. I noticed that the water and lakeside areas are also threatened by other factors such as the use of agrochemicals and fertilizers, cultivation upon to the age of water bodies, destruction of papyrus for roofing houses, and cutting of trees for timber, charcoal burning and other uses. This has exposed the lake to siltation and contamination that needs to be managed. Perhaps our visit to the past can remind us of the value to preserve our environment and aid us with a cure to the ailing earth. 
During the old times, construction around water bodies of any kind, namely lakes, a well or swamps were discouraged. It was believed that the act would suffocate the hidden gods. Offenders risked a spell from the gods of the land. I recall as a child, walking along such wet territory, it was considered a taboo to step into those channels. Never mind, we never wore shoes on our feet, later on knowing their use, and to some, if shoes ever existed anyway. Unreasonable or unjustifiable as the tales may sound, they emphasized the protective instincts towards environment and ingrained the intuitive sense of the generations that came after. Senses that are now dissolving as fast as the fading earth. During the filming trip, I met someone, Dr. Richard Ogutu, who is determined to sensitize the communities on how best to protect what climate change has left in its wake. Together we identified the need to establish climate smart communities around this lake to act as examples to bigger lakes and communities around them. And these are to be communities with cleaner sources of energy, communities that realize the benefits of recycling waste and other smart waste management practices, and most importantly, communities with goals and have pledged to combat climate change. When united, our cause is unrivaled. In unison we speak, who can go against united people? United by the bones of tradition, strengthened by the unbreakable desires to save our planet. After all, the erstwhile tales around the fireplace were not just told to warm the cold nights or strengthen bondages between elders and the young, but to protect our core existence. Yeah.